I'm just an average American. But I'm an American American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. Oh, hi. I liked it better when I didn't know I was surrounded by literal Nazis. I was okay when it was just figurative Nazis. The guy who cut me off in traffic, the roommate who decided to put the toilet paper roll under instead of over, and whoever thought it was a good idea to invent orbits. You know, figurative Nazis. But apparently in this brave new world of reboots and sequels, we decided to take a second pass at World War II. These are the faces of the neo-Nazis. I really didn't think it was going to look like the Model UN Club took a trip to 1930s Berlin. Joking aside, this is incredibly serious. These people who support Nazis support a group who committed genocide and hated individual freedom. Over this last week, I have been struggling to understand a few things. In a really sad way, I sort of understand racism, sexism, bigotry. Not that I agree with it, but I understand where someone would feel threatened or insecure over somebody who is different than they are, seemingly succeeding where they aren't. I mean, essentially, they are the Bert to the rest of the world's Ernie. There was a snippet of a film that made the rounds on social media right after the events in Charlottesville this past week. I played a little bit of that at the beginning of this video. The short is called Don't Be a Sucker, made by the United States War Department in 1943. It shows a man being swayed by a fascist. It's not until the guy on a soapbox starts saying the Masons are also so evil that the man in the crowd starts to question a few things. Without Catholics! Without Freemasons! You know What's wrong with the Masons? I'm a Mason. Hey, that fella's talking about me. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? Someday I want to be a stone cutter. All of humanity has a fear of the other. You find that in secluded Amazon tribes and you find it in Western society. I myself find it pretty difficult to believe that not everybody is scared out of their minds of this guy. But that's just me. We often fear what we don't know, scared that it makes us look stupid. I have a feeling that we probably fear things more that we don't understand which is a lyric from Beauty and the Beast. Civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, all of this nowadays seems obvious. But when you delude yourself that you are so different from another group or that you'll never possibly understand their point of view, bad policy happens. Like orbits. And this leads into something that I've been thinking about and reading about over the last couple of weeks, which is that perhaps liberalism has failed. I'll link to an interview down in the description below, but in it, author Mark Lilla describes his book, The Once and Future Liberal. To be fair, there are criticisms of his premise, so definitely read up on those as well. Really, while you're at it, you may as well read all of Western literature just to catch yourself up. Part of his argument is that the left has been too focused on groups, that they're too focused on differences. And this all started altruistically, but now we bicker about the right adverb to use instead of things that are truly important. So I wonder if we're at a point where instead of focusing on those differences, we can instead talk about the things that makes us the same. Like, that we're not Nazis. My grandfather fought in World War II. He was a gunner for the Canadian military. And when he returned back home, my mother tells me that he did not like to talk about the war. It was the last thing on his mind. He instead wanted to focus on happier things. This was a man in his early 20s who went over to a foreign land to fight against fascism, to fight against this evil that was spreading in the world. He walked with a bit of a limp. He had shrapnel that was in his leg because of this accident that happened on the field. We only found out about this recently as my parents and, and myself are starting to help clean out my grandmother's old place and looking through all these old documents. We came across a telegram and some other news reportage that there was, I don't know if it was a grenade or a bomb that exploded very near him. And the only reason he survived was because his friend wanted to switch places. For whatever reason, the friend didn't want to be on the left or on the right. However, that scenario worked out. And so they switched places, this explosion happened, and that friend was killed. And my grandfather survived, was able to come back to Canada, marry my grandmother, and then eventually I happened. I think about that quite deeply, that this was a man who probably had a little bit of resentment to himself for surviving. He had that survivor's guilt because he was supposed to be in that position 
that ultimately killed his friend. And I feel very lucky and privileged to be in a situation where I can actually just make a YouTube video about that in and of itself. Those types of stories are not unique to me. They, are, they happen all the time to those people, to the people who fought over in that really awful, grisly environment that was World War II. My grandfather could see the evil that was the Nazi Empire, and he took it upon himself to go and do something about it. So alt-right, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, if you could do me a favor, take your debunked worldview and your rent-a-swastika flag, take a drive to your favorite secluded spot, and kindly, both figuratively and literally, get lost. Thanks for watching. Literally. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. And if we could just make a pact right now where I don't have to think about Nazis for a week, that'd be great. That'd be so neat. Let's do that.